Apple may have made some progress on the new 2019 Mac Pro, but even if we can't beat them to market, we are still dedicated to finishing off our custom overclocked 2019 Hack Pro. And while we were able to get to the point of test fitting everything last time, today is gonna be a much more complete build and everything you see in front of me, 1200 watt power supply, new SSD that works properly on our motherboard, custom cable mod cables, uh, these brackets that we need to fit everything together. All of that is going in, including tubing, so we can get to the point where we can actually leak test our water cooling loop and find out how ready to go this thing is. Speaking of ready, you were ready for this segue, weren't you? Ridge Wallet is the sleek way to keep wallet bulge down with its compact frame and RFID blocking inner plates. Use offer code Linus to save 10% on a Ridge Wallet and get free worldwide shipping at the link below. So because of how cramped everything in this build is gonna be, we actually need to install all the components of it in a specific order. So we're starting here with the fittings on our motherboard, both for the CPU as well as for this Bits Power VRM block that we've pre-installed on the board. Now, I know some of you are gonna be disappointed, but again, due to the cramped nature of the build, we've opted for soft rather than hard tubing. So my apologies, but with the way that some of these runs need to go, it was not going to be realistic to hardline tube this thing. Now that our fittings are on the board, we're gonna lay down our power cables that need to run behind the board approximately where they need to go. So you probably noticed that our board has two 24 pin power connectors. We don't need to use both of them. So we're just gonna use the one. We're gonna run that right about here. Then we've got two dual eight pin PCI Express connector cables here. And these are long, but they need to go a long way. So we're gonna run these uh, right about there. With our cables in place, the next step is to install our motherboard tray. And this has gotten some pretty great modifications since last time. It went on a bit of a diet, so it's lighter. And it's got a really clever little mounting mechanism that uses these uh, kind of these ball and socket joints here to just, watch this. Snap, 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 snap and it just holds it in place like that. We have screws too, right? Awesome. And I put in all of them. So I guess I don't really need to. Now it's screwed in, it's not going anywhere. It's amazing what a couple cables and a motherboard backplate do towards making something look like a real case, eh? All right, now it's time to throw in our motherboard, which by the way, guys, does still work. <laughs> this motherboard is like almost comically large for this case. Okay, and down it goes. There we go. That one should go in pretty good. Next, we're gonna put in our graphics cards. And while I'd love to tell you guys that we're gonna put in our PCI slots today, unfortunately, these mounting holes for the radiator here need to be moved down about three millimeters. It's a very, very, very small error. And then also, oh, we need to rethink the way that the top is done up here to account for the curve of the case. So once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and recess the area around here, plop this in here, and then once it's painted, it should be completely seamless. I'm sorry, but we're gonna have some saggy graphics cards again. But hey, at least they're water-cooled now. Actually, that one doesn't sag too bad, see it kinda rests on there. Aw, oh, yes. Ah, here, we'll just put this wire here, and then, there you go. Now it doesn't sag. Now we can go ahead and tube this up. Ugh. That is looking sharp. Oh boy, this is gonna be a real tight radius here. Whew. Oh boy. Now it's time for us to mount our pump to our radiator. This isn't really my favorite mounting style from an aesthetic standpoint, but there just weren't really a ton of options for us in terms of making it fit. Get in there, you rat bastard. So then I'm just gonna put this in. That's, uh, I guess the res needs to go on the underside of the cables there, or what? Yes. That is where our janky homemade bracket comes in. Well, it might be kind of flimsy and made of sheet metal, but what it does, ooh, is gets our fittings out of the way of the motherboard. Ooh, okay, really not the best mount ever. Guys, don't think of it as flimsy and janky. 
Think of it as anti-vibration. Fans will be at the front or on the, yeah, oh yeah, at the front, yeah. It's not perfect, but it might just be enough. Yep, we've got a little bit more access there. That should be good enough. Now we just need to pull it back out and do this run, which is gonna be really hard for us to get at once the radiator is installed and bolted in. And while we've got easy access to it, we're gonna go ahead and throw on this other tube that's gonna go over to our top graphics card. And this one right here, that's gonna go over to our VRM cooler for the motherboard. The last little trick up our sleeves for, wait, what about the fans that go on the front of the red? For our sakes. Now we can throw our fans on the radiator. Uh, we'll be using black ones. One other thing we're gonna change in the final build is the way that this pressure mount for the front radiator works. Uh, instead of just, ugh, sitting in it like this at the front of the case, there's actually gonna be a locking mechanism at the top. But for now, we're just gonna kinda wedge it in there. So bear with me here for a sec. We will just deal with these later. Oof. Um, like it's one thing to CAD out a model that everything fits into. It's another to actually fit them in. Yeah, I need to get these PCIe cables out of my darn way here. Oh yeah, can you reach those for the optical drive? Hey, hey, there we go. Oh lordy, yeah, I haven't even put the top one in yet. Oh, I'm trying. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I might have had to do this before. Uh. Nicholas, do you want to hold this graphics card for a second? Uh. There we go. And then if you just hold it kind of like that. Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. Okay, cool. I got it, I got it. I'm getting over it. He's not getting over the lip now. Woo! It's definitely got some friction on it. All right, can I help you with this video card now? You good? This definitely needs a, a thicker piece of metal here, I think. Yeah, I'll make it. Yeah, I don't think there's any getting around it. Man, this is one of the tightest builds ever. And I mean that in both senses of the word. It's tight, you know? Also, it's like really tight. <laughs> It turns out our measurements were ever so slightly wrong for the VRM block, and we might not be able to get away with using full 25 millimeter thickness fans. So for now, we're fitting in some of these slim fans from Silverstone, and then, do you mind actually supporting that bottom GPU just a touch there? Yeah, that's good. Okay, then we need to rotate, oof, this radiator into place, and yeah. We're just gonna mash that against the back for now, but in the final build, obviously, that would be screwed into place. Whew! Got all this space here, no problem. Just kidding, power supply time. So it goes in here, but I'm afraid I'm at a bit of a loss as to how exactly this bracket figures into it. And basically it's gonna sit there. Oh my God. And just like that. That's the mount? And? That's terrifying. All right, you know what, what the hey, we might as well put this thing in, right? Wait a minute. So the bracket needs to go on here uh, yeah. what the F? And then the connectors need to go in. What yeah. the F? You know what, I think we can make it work though. Just need to plug everything in ahead of time. Yeah, this isn't too bad. And we're just plugging in one eight pin connector per uh, it actually needs, CPU, right? Yeah. Okay, so that'll be screwed in right there, basically. And then this goes right there, basically. Oh, but this way. Ah! Oh, wow. That is one trained cable right there. All right, it's in. So that goes there. And then I got this now. And this one goes right there on the other side. There we go. 1200 watt power supply. Here, can I have that, that thing? Yeah, perfect. There we go. Uh, now I just need the last tube, right? Uh, actually, I think it's two tubes. Two tubes. Where's my other last um, tube-ish? Oh, oh, yeah. oh. I didn't realize you didn't put this in. Oh, crapsicles. I guess I have to hook it up if we're gonna be leak testing today. Shoot. <laughs> okay. I can do this. I am strong. Okay. Got it.
Ah, it's on. All right, and then uh, so this one goes over to here. Yep. Are you sure? Yeah, this one looks really long. Wow, that's a little overkill. Um, but you just. Yep, and there's a lock. What is it doing? Okay, here we go. That is the most overkill thing we've ever done. He said while building a like spec for spec replica of the new Mac Pro. <laughs> and I wonder why anyone would just buy a Mac. It seems crazy, doesn't it? Oh my God, this would be basically impossible to hardline. Like anything can be done. You know, blah, 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 human, human spirit, etc. ingenuity, blah, blah. But like, no. <sighs> We really need to get the right size tubing for the final build. Uh, yeah. Actually, you know what would make it a lot easier? Is if we just had a cup of hot water. Oh yeah. So as some of you noticed, we've been a little wishy-washy about what we're using for storage, and that's because we had a little bit of trouble finding an add-in card that supports multiple SSDs, like this one here, that has the PLX chip that it needs to bifurcate the 16X slot. Or I guess, what is it called? Quadrifurcate? I, I don't know. Does it, is it still called bifurcation if it's, it's four-way? Is it? Okay. So this from Amphaltech is called the Squid Family Rev 2.3 Gen 3 M.2 Carrier. Or we might go with this SSD from a company called Liquid. Either way, we're gonna go ahead and install it. Oh, here we go, in the slot, right next to that GPU. And the crazy thing is we've got dual Radeon 7s in here now. We've got a high speed, what is this, like a three terabyte SSD or something stupid like yeah. that? Yeah. And we still have four PCI Express slots for further expansion. Oh, what do you got there? Um, this came in just recently. Oh, awesome. So this is our AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0 add-in card that apparently is Mac OS compatible. So we can throw that on. It is gonna live in that. Bay. Yeah, that's gonna be a little hard to get at right now. What do we think? Does that look pretty good? Yeah, we'll figure the wire out later. Okay, so sorry, I, I stand corrected. Three PCI Express slots for expansion now. Oh yeah, uh, how, how are we dealing with the power cord for the power supply? Basically, under Down here, here, you'll just plug it in. Cool. It's still roughly out of the way. Can we get it here? Um, no. Shout out to O Canada Supply for this awesome workshop. So, we promised leak testing, but this doesn't look like water. This is actually a fun new toy we just got our hands on from EK. And what it is, is it's a way of pressurizing your water cooling system with air. Then, if you have any air leaks, you can assume that your loop, well, leaks. And how does this work exactly? Which one do we hook up to? Does it matter? Um, we can pull off any, the, any of the easy fittings. Easy fittings. I know. <laughs> yeah, sure. We get right on that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm plugging this graphics card block right here. All right. Then I'm hooking the fitting that was screwed into it into my pressure tester. Now we pump you up. Now we play the waiting game. Two hours later. We're back and it's all good. So we can go ahead and Disconnect this. We know our water cooling loop is going to work now. So all that's left is to close out this video by ah, closing up our machine. But there is one more surprise for you, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, yes. I'm sure you didn't expect an LTT project to not have any RGB. Yes, my friends, we are actually going to be replacing the stock Apple logos with LTT logos complete with RGB backlighting. So check this out. Basically, it's just an acrylic puck that has an LTT logo etched into it. We're probably gonna have to do some sanding on the top and we may have to coat the back of it in order to get a nice uh, even amount of lighting once we've got LEDs around the edges. But man, am I ever thrilled with how this build's going down, honestly. This might be the Mac that gets me to switch to a Mac. 
If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you're subscribed for the next part. And if you want something to watch right away, maybe check out our Minecraft server video. That was another scratch build from us that I think you guys are gonna think is pretty freaking sweet. LG Graham laptops are super popular with my staff and they can be for you too, because we are giving away three of them. These things are absolutely fantastic, especially when you're on the go. They're super light, so if you've got a backpack full of, you know, your water bottle, your snack, your laptop, all the stuff you need for the day, you don't have to worry about your laptop weighing you down and they don't compromise on battery life. Often when I'm on business trips, I will go an entire night or sometimes two without recharging it and still have the confidence to know that my laptop's gonna be ready for me when I need to take notes. So how do you win one of these? Well, the event starts on October 31st and ends on November 13th. We'll announce the winner on November 20th. You've gotta find my post at lg underscore tech dot it and follow the steps to win the prizes. The links are in the description. So you gotta follow at lg underscore tech dot it. You've gotta post on your channel or leave a comment on my post describing how an LG gram would make a difference from your frustrating current laptop. And step three, you've got to tag the photo at LG underscore tech dot IT and at Linus Tech with hashtag LG Gram and hashtag get Gram be free. So thanks for watching guys and we'll see you at the next video.